Ever notice how some interview questions just seem to invite like the most canned responses? Uh-huh. It's like, what's your greatest strength? And everyone's got their little speech ready. Right. Like it's such a setup for like a, oh, a rehearsed yeah. answer. But you know, real success, it's about way more than just like reciting a script. Absolutely. Yeah. Anyone can memorize a list of strengths, but wouldn't you rather see how someone actually thinks on their feet, how they handle a real challenge? That's what we're diving into today. We've got this article, Unlocking Top Talent, and it's full of strategies for interview questions that actually give you a glimpse of what a candidate could really bring to the table. It's about finding someone who's not just gonna fill the role, but really thrive in it, become a valuable part of the team. So it's more about fit than just skills on paper. Exactly. Think of it like you're building something. You need the right material, sure, but those alone don't make a great house. You need the right design. Make sure everything fits together. Exactly. And that's where this deep dive gets really interesting. The article says, before you even think about questions, you have to really understand the role itself. So not just the job description, but like, what does success actually look like in this role? In our company, with our team? You got it. They actually say, figure out those non-negotiables. Like, what are the top three to five things someone must have to be amazing in this job? Could be communication, could be a knack for problem solving, maybe deep knowledge in a specific area. I like that we're starting with this. Because it's so easy to get lost in the resume details, we forget the big picture. Right. By defining those must-haves up front, you're basically creating a roadmap for your whole interview process. And then you can spot those hidden gems, the people who might not have the perfect resume, but they've got those other qualities that mean they'll succeed in the long run. 100%. So to everyone listening, take a second now, jot down those three to five must-have qualities for the role you're thinking about. Okay, so we've got a handle on those must-have qualities, those non-negotiables. Right. Now we have to actually, like, build an interview process that helps us uncover them, you know? For sure. It's time to ditch those generic questions. Oh, tell me about it. And get down to the good stuff. Yeah, instead of that classic, tell me about a time you failed, which, let's be real, everyone has a practice answer for anyway. Yeah, exactly. And it it always ends being like a success disguised as a failure. Not very revealing. Not at all. So what's the alternative? This article dives into two types of questions. Yeah. Behavioral and situational. Okay, let's break those down. So behavioral, that's all about like past experiences. You got it. You're asking them to describe specific situations where they had to use certain skills or how they navigated tough stuff. Like instead of just saying, are you a good communicator? You'd ask, "Mm, let me see, how about, tell me about a time you had to give tough feedback to a teammate. How'd you handle that? Ooh, okay, I like that. It's way more specific. Right, because anyone can say they have good communication skills, but this forces them to show it. Show, don't tell. Exactly. And you can get a sense of their thought process, too, just from their example, like how they make decisions under pressure, that kind of thing. It's like a sneak peek into how they actually work, not just how they interview. Totally. Now, situational questions, those are more like what-if scenarios. Okay, so you're throwing a hypothetical problem at them. Right. Like, let's say the role involves tons of project management. You could say, imagine you're leading this project and suddenly two of your key people are out. How do you adapt? How do you keep things on track? I'm already stressed just thinking about that. Right. But that's the point. There's not always a single right answer. It's about how they think on their feet. Their problem-solving process. Do they panic? Do they make a plan? Exactly. You're assessing their ability to, like, prioritize, maybe delegate. All those things you can't tell from a resume. Right, right. And you can make those situational questions super relevant to, like, your specific industry, right? Absolutely. So if it's a fast-paced startup environment, maybe your curveball is about a product launch getting delayed or a competitor releasing something similar. I got to see how they handle the heat. Exactly. Yeah. Now, one thing to remember with both these types of questions, behavioral and situational, a good framework to have in mind is the STAR method. Oh, yeah. I've heard of that. It stands for Situation, Task, action result it helps people structure their answers makes it easier to follow their thought process right they describe the situation their task what action they took and the outcome gives you a much clearer picture of their experience and then you can compare candidates more easily too because they're all following a similar format exactly but even though these types of questions are super useful we can't forget about hard skills right of course not storytelling is great but they got to be able to do the job too exactly 
But even when you're assessing those core competencies, we could be a little more creative than just, can you code in Python? So less like a checklist, more like... More like a conversation. Yeah, okay. For example, if you need someone who's a whiz with data analysis, instead of just asking what software they use, you could say something like, imagine you're looking at this massive data set and you need to find trends that will help us improve customer engagement. Walk me through how you'd tackle that. Okay, so it's practical. It's tied to a real business goal. Right, and you get to see their thought process in action. Do they jump right to conclusions or are they more methodical? How do they explain their thinking? It's all valuable info. So we've talked about how to really dig into those hard skills, those core competencies. But then there's that whole other side of things. Oh, yeah, for sure. That like gut feeling of whether someone's actually a good fit for your team, for your company. Culture fit, right. Yeah. But it's not just about fitting in with how things are now. Right. Like we don't want to just replicate what we already have. Exactly. It's about finding someone yeah. who connects with your company values. Someone who will not only fit in, but actually contribute to the culture in a positive way, long term. Okay, so how do you actually uncover that in an interview setting? How do you get beyond just like the rehearsed answers? Well, the article actually suggests a pretty simple question. What type of work environment do you find most motivating and productive? Ooh, I like that. It's open-ended, but it gets right to like what makes them tick, you know? Exactly. Are they someone who loves collaborating, bouncing ideas around? Or do they prefer to put their headphones in and get in the zone? more independent? Do they thrive in a fast-paced environment, or do they need a little more structure? Their answer tells you a lot about whether they'd actually be happy, productive in your company's environment. It gives them a chance to tell you what they need to succeed. Right, which ultimately benefits everyone. Totally. Now, while we're talking about things that help people succeed, we got to mention those all-important soft skills. Communication, teamwork, Problem solving, those are huge EE. And they're hard to assess, right? Because anyone can say they're a team player on their resume. Exactly. So you got to get specific, use real world examples. The article talks about asking something like, tell me about a time you had to work with a difficult teammate. What was the situation and how did you approach it? Oof. Yeah, we've all been there. Whether it's someone who's always missing deadlines or just has a very different style. For sure. And again, it's not about a right answer. It's about how they navigate that kind of interpersonal challenge. You're looking for those conflict resolution skills, empathy. Can they find common ground even when it's tough? This has been so helpful. We've gone from like defining those must-have qualities to crafting questions that actually get at them both hard skills and those more like nuanced aspects of fit. It's about being intentional with every step of the interview process. And I think this really highlights how like the best interviews, they're not just about checking boxes or grilling someone. They should feel more like a conversation. 100% yeah. better chance to connect, understand someone's experiences and see if their vision for their career aligns with yours. So to our listeners, if you could ask just one question to get a feel for someone's potential, what would it be? Think about that. And maybe even more importantly, how would you, you answer it? That's something to reflect on, whether you're hiring or hoping to be hired. That's all the time we have for today's deep dive, but we'll catch you next time for more insights and advice on navigating the ever-evolving world of work.